Secure the bag, y'all. That's the brand, and we get to the bag. What's going on, family? It's your man Tay Sway here once again with episode number two of the beginners course of the market watch. Now, for anybody who's new and you're just kind of peeping your head in, I want you to know that we're going through a bunch of beginner stuff. I'm going to be going over lingo of the market. I'm going to be going over some of the little sneaky things people are doing in the market that are making them pretty much lose, even though they think they're winning. <laughs> I'm going to go over a few sneaky things I see as an experienced trader of over 10 years. I'm going to be going over all of that so that I can kind of give you a head start or maybe even give you the direct path so you don't have to go through a bunch of stuff and, and trip over yourself as you're trying to like learn it on your own, right? I'm going to give you kind of like the cheat codes. All right, so that's what this is. We're going to be doing um, a few beginner um, indicators, if you will, today. And we have to learn these indicators, not because they all work 100%. The best thing about indicators is just knowing that they exist and what they are used for. Okay. And that's a big, so once again, this is one of those little sneaky things that a lot of traders won't tell you, right? They won't tell you this. So for example, think about basketball right we'll use basketball for a minute and keep in mind this is the ebook i'll make sure i'll put this in the description so you can go through it yourself but i, I want to go through a quick thing about indicators think about basketball the game of basketball right and let's just say you're going to be a a center okay a center which basically just is there to be tall block shots Re rebound the ball maybe and who knows maybe do a few layups that's it so because you're only going to be rebounding the ball blocking shots and maybe doing a few layups you should not learn how to dribble as a matter of fact you shouldn't even know what dribbling is don't even learn about it don't even spend time trying to learn how to dribble don't worry about dribbling you don't need it. you know what as a center dribbling is such a wasted indicator <laughs> it is such a lagging indicator for a center to try to learn how to dribble a basketball you don't need that the dribbling for my people who don't know about basketball the dribbling is for the point guard the smaller guys on the court usually the point guard shooting guard they're going to be you know 5 11 6 3 maybe 6 4 they're they're they tend to be a little bit shorter than the centers. The centers are seven foot one, seven three, you know, some of them six ten, six eleven, but they're pretty tall. Six foot ten is probably the shortest, you know, most of the time. Right? So a lot of people would look at the center and go, Why are you doing dribbling drills? Get down on the on the block, big boy. <laughs> Don't worry about dribbling. This is what a lot of people are doing in the stock market. They say, oh, you shouldn't be worried about using that because it doesn't work. Not for what you're trying to do. So they tell you to forget about it. Don't know about it. Don't learn about it. Don't even waste your time with it. And what ends up happening is you end up not knowing the actual game. So I'm going to take it a step further with the basketball um, analogy. So you're playing basketball. Right. And I'm going to tie this into, I'm, I promise you, I'm going to tie this in. So stick around because I got some good stuff. We're going to go over this stuff and how it could still be used. Right. So let's say, okay, you don't want to dribble because you're a center. But not only that, you don't plan on having the basketball much anyway. So you don't even want to know the rules. You shouldn't need to know about double dribbling. You shouldn't need to know about traveling out of bounds. Who needs out of bounds? My job is to go to the center of the court under the basketball goal, block shots, rebound, and maybe put the ball back up right here. So I don't need to know about out of bounds. I don't need to know about double dribbling. I don't need to know the rules. So I'm not going to learn the rules. I'm just going to focus on dribbling or on blocking shots. I'm going to focus on rebounding. And I want to focus on close to the rim layups. That's it. This is essentially what you are doing when you come into the trading world and you start blocking out indicators. Oh, we don't need that. We don't need this. We don't need this. You start basically cutting yourself off from the rules. You don't know 
what other traders are doing. And the reason why I say this is because this whole game is made up of people. And if you know that a lot of people use something, you might you might want to know exactly what they're using and how they're applying it or how it works so that maybe you can go against it. <laughs> That's what makes us really good traders. It's not that we use the same indicators that everybody else is using. using. It's that we know about the indicators that everybody is using and we go against them. This is one of the reasons why, you know, I know a lot of people don't like me for this, but I have to protect, I have to protect my, my people. This is one of the reasons why I charged so much money for STB. And for even to this day, why, you know, even though I'm not accepting any like mentorship, you know, or people into STB, I'm just teaching for free. This is why there are certain things I just will not teach on the internet. I will not put out here on YouTube. Why? Because, and I, I can vouch for this over my 10 years of trading because I've seen things happen. Why won't I teach certain things on YouTube? Why won't I give certain things out for free? Because when I first got started in my trading career, about 10 years ago, trading penny stocks, things like Bollinger Bands, as you see here, these little white lines right in here, these are Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands used to work wonders. I mean, literally, when it came to the bottom of the Bollinger Band, it would go back to the top. When it got to the top of the Bollinger Band, it would go back to the bottom. When it got to the bottom of the bottom of Japan, it would go back to the top. From the top, it would try to get back to the bottom and it would just bounce in between the Bollinger Bands. And it did it, I mean, so amazingly well. And honestly, this was one of the only indicators that I ever used when I first started, uh, pra not practice trading, but excuse me, penny stock trading. So as a penny stock trader, I would use Bollinger Bands. I would use the RSI. I would use the MACD. I would use some EMAs, which I still kind of use the EMAs, but I would use all of these things and we'll go, we'll go over some of these. But why, why am I very selective on what I teach now? Because, and you all can vouch for me, anybody who's a new trader, please, or excuse me, anybody who's a somewhat informed trader and you have seen this happen in your trading career, please, please, please put in the comments. Haven't you seen, answer this question, haven't you seen many of these indicators stop working the more that they are taught? Please answer that question in the comments, please. I need multiple people to answer this question because then it'll help you make, make it'll make sense. You can make it make sense because then you start realizing, man, no wonder why these guys, especially Tay, no wonder why he's not like just giving it all out because it stops working when he does. Yeah, it does. And what we saw over the, what I saw over the last 10 years is that many of these indicators that used to work like a charm, they no longer work because too many people know about them. And when too many people know about them, <laughs> it becomes a problem. It's like anything. Think about your favorite restaurant. It's cool. You can come in get a table as soon as you walk in. It's decent. It's not too packed. It's not too crowded, but it's decent. It's a decent crowd. The music's good. The food is banging. But as soon as the word gets out that this is a dope restaurant, there's usually no wait at the door. You can walk right in, get your food in a timely manner. And the atmosphere, the vibes are dope. Great music. It's not too loud as far as the people in there talking and laughing. It's just a dope vibe. But as soon as that word gets out, to a bunch of people, what happens? You go, oh, there's a 45 minute wait. There's an hour and a half wait. Why? Because everybody wants to come here now. You get to your table. Okay, let's sit down, let's have fun. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, it's pretty loud. Um, I know usually you can pick the song that you wanna to listen to, or maybe you know there's a playlist that we could play for the people who are selectively here. But right now we can't do any of that because it's too many people. And then as you're trying to listen to what they're actually playing on the music, you can't hear, why? Right? Because it's too loud. There's too many people in there, it's packed tight. The people right next to you, they're laughing too loud. You know, people are spitting up beer. You know how crap, you know, I ain't gonna go with that. But seriously, you got all of these things going on now. Why? Because the word got out and too many people know about it now. 
It happens in every aspect of our lives. When too many people get access, too many things start happening. So does that mean, once again, because I'm sure some of y'all are going to be like, okay, well, I don't need to learn any of this. No, 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 no. Yes, you do. Why? Because the way we win, and one of the biggest ways that I win is a lot of times, I know it's going to sound weird, but a lot of times when people are going short, let's just say for people who don't know what going short is, that means they're betting against the market. They're, they're basically saying it's at $10 now, I bet you it's going to go to five. If it goes to five, that person who went quote unquote short makes money, right? But when the market goes short, <laughs> we go long. So I use these indicators because I know what people are afraid of. I know there are a bunch of newbies. They don't know how to play. And they're using these indicators because all of them pretty much been on YouTube. Nobody actually paid for the, the in-depth, that secret type of information, right? So everybody's using in, you know, YouTube and Instagram as indicators or, or to learn indicators. And because it's so many newbies doing that, then I have to play or we have to play in a way to make newbies, you know, to basically take their money. <laughs> that's exactly what happens because that's what big money is doing. So I roll with big money, right? I roll with big money. So big money knows that when you get to the top of the Bollinger Bands, many of them are going to sell or try to go short. But there's a way to be able to tell, okay, top of the Bollinger Band, it's going to go even higher, <laughs> right? There's many ways to be able to tell this, right? And my people in the STB, maybe we'll talk about this on the next mentor, uh, the private mentorship uh, class on Sunday. But there's many ways, and we already know because we use predictive indicators, not just what some people may call lagging indicators. Bollinger Bands, lagging. EMAs, lagging. RSI, lagging. MACD, these are lagging indicators. But we have to cover them. Why? Because you need to know them so that you know how to apply them even when too many people know about them. If you don't know these rules, if you don't know these indicators, guess what? You will get clapped. You will, in most cases, unless you are somebody who knows how to look at a naked chart, kind of like me, like a, you know, I would call it a master trader. Somebody's been doing this for a while. You don't really need indicators. I can look at a, a naked chart and I can tell you just by the price movement of the candles. I can tell you exactly what the, the market is about to do, right? Just by looking at the candles. And that's what we're going to go over uh, for the most part today is, Candles, want to start there. Because if you don't know candles, huh, you're going to have trouble, right? So very, very basic, right? Very, very basic stuff um, is candles. When you go to a chart, you're going to see candles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the candle. We're going to talk about the high, the close, the open, all of that good stuff, right? And then we're going to use just you looking at this, the high, the open, the close, we're going to go over a chart today, and we're going to chart out what happened today in the S&P 500 by using open, close, high, low, and pretty much what I'm teaching you right here, okay? The reason why I want to focus on candlesticks is because, because this is called a candlestick. Now, the reason why I want to focus on this is because this is your actual price action. And when you get good at being able to read these, they will tell a story and i'm gonna break that story down today please 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 show some love in the chat i'm about to go nuts please show some love in the chat this thing right here this is what people pay me a lot of money for right here and i just want to i want to show the love and give it out right now this is one of the things and the reason why i'm willing to teach this is because this is one of the things that does not get old this will not i don't care how many people know about it it will not change nothing can happen to it why because this doesn't lie. It's not a lagging indicator. It's not an indicator that can be manipulated. It's literally a conversation between buyers and sellers, and they tell a story, all right? And that's why I have to break this down like this, okay? So this is a story. The story is that, hey, market opens right here, okay? And I'm, I'm explaining how and why. Market opens right here market decides to go down a little bit hmm buyers don't want it to go down much so it moves back to open continues up goes a little higher but sellers are now starting to step in so much so that they overpower the buyers 
just enough to get them back here and that candle closes right here, right? Now I'm going to explain exactly what those things are and what they mean a little bit slower. So people can, you know, really try to, you know, grasp this thing, okay? So what does this mean, okay? These are what we call candle wicks, okay? I know that says lower shadow, but to keep it very sim simple, this looks like a candle, right? Looks like a candle with a wick. You know, you'd like the top of the wick and then the wick burns down to the candle and melts the candle, right? That's why we call these candlesticks. These are candle sticks. And this is what you will see represented on a chart. Now, many newbies or people who are uninitiated, they don't know exactly the conversation that's going on with these candles. And that's why I have to break this thing down, okay? Now, that being said, you have an open, once again, the camp, every stock chart, I don't care if you're looking at the minute, the three minute, the five minute, the one hour, the four hour, the daily, the weekly, it does not matter. If this candle is on that chart, this candle represents whatever that chart time frame is. Tay, what does that mean? If we are on the one minute chart, when the candle opens, that is the candle for the minute. That means it's going to open right here. And in 60 seconds, it's going to make a bunch of movement, right? It's going to go up. It's going to go down. It's going to kind of move around for one minute, 60 seconds. And it's going to get indecisive. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? And then it's going to go up, come all the way up, come down, close. Boom, 60 seconds. Done. That was a 60-second time frame. Now, if we go to a daily chart, that candle now represents one day, 24 hours. And this is where the fun comes in. So in 24 hours, this candle is just doing this all day, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Now it looks like a green candle and it's like, well, how is it moving up and down? Well, when it opens, guess what? When it opens, it only looks flat. Kind of like this little line right here. When it opens, it's just this little line. Now price going up creates this body, right? Price going down creates this wick especially when they do what I call pull the skirt up. So let's just say this candle opens and then it falls. What happens is the candle goes red. It will look red because anytime a candle opens and then looks to get below the open, the candle goes red because that is a seller's candle. The conversation of that candle when it's red means that the sellers are winning. Okay, when it goes green, that means the buyers are winning. Okay, when you get wicks to the bottom side of it, that means sellers took it down, but buyers were stronger. And the higher you get this thing up, the stronger the buyers were. Now, the reason why this is important is because it tells a story for your next candle. If your buyers were super, 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 super strong, in the first candle that you're looking at, guess what? That next candle, those buyers are still going to be there, baby. So you can almost guarantee that they're going to show up and show out for the next candle. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about on the chart, okay? Now, today, we just are literally breaking down open, close, um, swing high, swing lows on these candles and how the conversation goes. Now, over here, People are going to go, okay, wait a minute, Tate. it's flipped. So open is now at the high of this candle, but it's at the low of this candle. Well, remember what I told you. When you open and move below the open, that means sellers are winning. Sellers are winning. So what they do is the sellers come in the door, they open this, they open the store up, right? And then the sellers push you to the basement. You know what? We're going to the basement. And you, the buyers aren't strong enough. So the sellers get to close the market for the day. Or if this is a minute chart for the minute, if this is an hour chart, they get to close the market for the hour at a lower low. It opened up here and it went lower, right? This is how it works. And once again, this action on these sides just represents how high it went and how low it went. This in the market is what we're going to be known or it's going to be known as swing lows, swing highs. Remember that that is going to be very important as you go uh, through your journey as a trader. 
And the reason why I say that is because swing highs and swing lows act as support and resistance. They act as trigger points. They act as, I mean, literally they are very important. So please, 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 please watch this multiple times and get the conversation down pat. Now, honestly, I can look at a chart and look at the candles and tell you the conversation that's going on and where the market potentially is going to go. I don't really need many indicators, but we will get to the indicators because people need to know what those indicators are because at any given time, you may need them for confluence, right? They're good to pull out and just say, hey, what's going on? I, I can't see what's going on, so let me see by using some indicators, right? Um, but are they my main thing uh, that I use? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, so once again, open, close means it's a red candle if the close is below the open. If it opens and the close is above, it's going to be a green candle. That's how that works. This is exactly the conversation that's going on. And I will explain more in the next chart that we're going to look up today of the S&P 500. Okay. So let's get into it. All right, family. So for the sake of what we have going on um, for my newbies, I'm going to stick to a regular chart that my newbies can watch. And, and you know, from people who are new to this thing, you can watch and you can kind of go in and chart and look at yourself. So the SPY or what people may call the SPIDER, S-P-D-R, this is an ETF for the S&P 500. Right, it makes it easy for you to buy it and sell it. Now, it's still pretty expensive. It's four hundred bucks for a beginner. You might only have a couple hundred dollars, so that means you can only buy one share. That's cool, right? The goal right now is just for you to come in and paper trade. I don't want any money going out or being deployed right now. Right now, what we are looking for is what paper trading. We're looking to learn a strategy. We're looking to learn how the market moves before you ever put in real money. Now, with that being said, anything that I teach, you better, I demand it of you, you better make sure you are paper trading only. I do not want you trading real money, okay? And I will continue to say that from the top of the mountain, all right? Now, let's have some fun with this, okay? Let's have some fun with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this. Now, I know some, I get it all the time. Uh, it's, it's always one to five trolls that just want to talk crap. Oh, it's easy to look at a chart when it's when it's not live. It's easy to back to, it's just, it's always some BS. And usually they aren't pro profitable traders because profitable traders don't have enough time to, to troll. But I'm going to go back and use a replay just for teaching purposes only. Just for teaching purposes only, okay? So what we're going to do now, I, want, I like to also use this for anybody who's um, wondering how the market moves, anybody who wants to kind of go back and look at what went wrong, what went right in the market. The replay feature is amazing, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go back here. And we're just going to, you know, we're going to keep it G. We're going to keep it nice and tight, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at candles. We're going to go over candles a little bit more. But I just want to show you the open. So look at this, open and close. Look how small these candles are, right? So look, it opened, it went way down here, came way up here, and then came right back and closed right there. So basically the open and the close was super narrow, super narrow. Look at that. The open was up here. And like I said, we don't know how, um, well, we don't know which way it went first, but it went as high as here, went as low as here, and then closed right here, okay? And that created this wide range of candle or of indecisiveness. This is something of what we would call a doji candle. We will get into that later. I just want to show you how this thing is playing out, right? Um, what this is telling me is that the buyers and the sellers are indecisive. We don't know who wants to win right now. Nobody knows where the market wants to go. So we're going to get some things, I would say, similar to a doji. That's pretty much a doji can. All right. And now, once again, remember, there's a conversation being played out right now. Buyers take it up. Sellers take it down. We don't know where we want to go. We're going to close right in the middle. The very next candle, sellers take it down. Buyers buy it right back up. They're like, no. Very next candle, market opens, 
buyers take it up a little bit, sell a step back in. No, we do not want this thing to fall. <laughs> All right, we do not want this thing to fall. Now, this is what we would consider as a fight between the bulls and the bears, right? And what are they fighting to do? They're fighting to take out this or this. Now, I can tell you now, whatever side they take out and hold above, we are going in that direction. Most, in most cases. The reason why I say that is because nothing in the market is 100%. I have to say that once again, nothing in the market is 100%. There's nothing you can point to me and say, hey, this indicator or this thing is gonna happen 100% of the time other than, hey, the market is either gonna move up or down 100% of the time, pretty much. Even if it's micro moves, you know, some people say, oh, it moves sideways. Well, if as it's moving sideways, it's going up and down in some capacity. Whether you go to a minute chart, three minute chart, it's moving up or it's moving down, <laughs> right? So once again, yes, the market's gonna move regardless, pretty much. That's the one thing I can say is 100%. Other than that, once again, you have to back test some of these things to see for yourself so you can get that conviction to see that, okay, even though this is a high probability thing, it does not happen or it does not play out 100% of the time, which means if it's 80% of the time, that means out of 100 trades, you're going to win 80 of them. That's solid. You're going to lose 20 of them. The goal is to make sure that your 80 wins are bigger than your 20 losses. What that means is when I lose, I try to lose less than $500, right? And this is just an example. If I lose... 20 times and I lose $500 each loss, okay, that's pretty tough. That's $10,000 worth of losses. Oof. Because 20 times $500, oof, that's ugly, right? That's ugly. That's a lot of losing. Oh, excuse me, I did the math wrong. I'm sorry. Um, that's a lot of losing. That's a lot of, that's a lot of losses. That, that hurts, right? That hurts. Because if I have, once again, 20 losses at $500 a pop, well, essentially what's going on is I'm going to be losing. What's that? Just so I'm not in line, this is late too, y'all. I can't do no math in my head right now. Hold on. So if I lose 500 every time I lose times 20 losses, that's $10,000, not 20. All right, so $10,000. Yes, it's late here in Puerto Rico and I'm tight. <laughs> but I'm still walking on my treadmill and I'm still getting this market watch out because I got love for y'all, right? I ain't asking for nothing but love. Just give me some love back. That's it. I'm losing sleep for y'all, losing time with my baby boy to teach y'all this. All I ask in return is some love, baby. Show up. Show me some love. All right, let's continue. So you lose $10,000 because you lost 20 trades, but the goal is when you win those other 80 times, the goal is to try to make your wins bigger than your losses. So if every time I lose, I lose $500 and I only lose 20 times, when I win on the other 80 times, the goal is to try to make $1,000 per win. So that's $80,000 that I win when I do make a win. And when I lose, I only lose 20 out of 100 trades, which is $10,000. So all in all, I make $70,000. That's how this thing works. It's the 10,000 from your losses times 80,000, or excuse me, minus the $80,000 that you made from 80 trades, okay? 80 trades times $1,000 profit per trade. That's how we do this thing. Minus 10K, it leaves you with $70,000, right? So once again, we're gonna play out this replay and see how this thing works. Now let's watch these bulls and bears fight, okay? Sellers are stepping in. Oh, they're trying to take it out. They want to take the market lower. Uh-oh. Can we break this? Can we break this and hold it? I need, and this is where I'm going to be talking about it being very important to know the conversation going on in this candle. Remember, I told you, I don't really, I don't even need indicators. I just need to see what this candle is going to be doing. Are you going to close below here? If you do, we should fall. If you close above here, we should go up. Especially if you close above and hold it, I need to see some support. Because right now, this is resistance, this is support. When it hits here, it should bounce. When it hits here, it should fall. 
until it breaks it. So let's see, okay? Uh-oh, uh-oh, we just got below. Now this can be what's called a fake out. We don't know where it's going yet, but this could be what we call a fake out. What we need to see is that this holds and then you get support right here and then it continues down. This is the conversation we're having. The bears were stronger. This is what's called a bearish engulfing candle. We will talk about that later. It is in the ebook, no worries. We'll talk about it later, all right? The bears or the sellers stepped in hard, drove this thing all the way under here, and then it looks like it closed it. Let's see, closed it. Oh, but the look, the bulls, see, it didn't hold it. Remember I told you I needed to get under and then hold this as resistance now. But what happened? This thing gapped up, touched it, and then went back up. What that tells me is that the bears are still losing. The bulls are too strong. Even though the bears brought it down here, the bulls are still too strong. They are buying this thing up. That's what this conversation is telling me. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, next. Oh, they're knocking on the door twice. Then look, when I see them knocking on that door, this is what I call knocking on the door. When they come up here and hit it, and then it hits it again, they're knocking on the door. That's the second time they knock on the door. Now it closes above. The bulls or the buyers are looking much stronger because this is the first time I've seen a knock on the door first, then a close above, right? See, this one just closed. Then they knocked on the door again, but it was just a test. This one looks like it wants to hold. So I'm going to expect to open above. Oh, and there it is. It opened above closed above. Now, what we like to see is confirmation candles. What that basically means is I get two candles above this that are higher. So this being support, if I can get this candle and another green candle, that gives me confirmation from the buyers that this thing wants to continue to go up. This is the conversation that we're having with the bulls and the bears. The bulls are telling me that they ain't bullshitting. The bulls are telling me that they are in control and they want to win this fight. Why? Because remember, I told you all of these wicks, remember, I said they act as support and resistance. So guess what? Resistance. Resistance. Look at this. Resistance. Resistance. And the fact that this big candle blew out got above all of those resistance levels. This is telling me that the bulls have won the fight. And as a matter of fact, it's not coming back because what happens with resistance when you get above it, it becomes support. What that basically means is nothing, I can't say nothing, but that means is when a candle comes down to support, it will support it and take it back up. Let's see if any new candles are gonna be held support on these, okay? Let's check it out and see. Okay, there it is, okay, there it is, look, support, look at that, support, see, this is what the replay section is for, y'all have to, I'm so sorry for yelling, I know I'm hurting some people's ears when I yell, I just get so excited about this stuff, look at that, this is what the replays and back testing are for, because when you see this play out like this, it makes it make more sense, and now you understand how the market is moving and why it is moving. Back test, back test, back test. Do your replays. Do not let these trolls shame you for using a replay. It is a good learning tool. It is a good research tool. It is a good tool to go back and journal your previous day's market moves. All right? So once again, look at that. Holding support. So the bears, look, when I say the bears step in, that, that can mean two things. One, the sellers from down here are trying to sell it up here, or, or the bulls from down here, the, the buyers from down here are starting to sell and take some profit. That's more than likely what that is. They take profit and maybe they even re-enter right here because that's support. This is support. I don't know if it'll come down here, but it could. Let's see. Okay, holding support, and we're off. Boom. 
holding nice support. Guess what happens? Now this becomes support. I don't even know this is so strong. This is what we call a 5% candle. Really is this one, but still it's close to a 5% candle. What that means is this thing is raising the roof. The bulls took this up so far that there's no wick. When I see a 5% candle with less than a you know a percent uh, or a very bullish engulfing candle, that tells me that we're gonna continue a bull move in most cases, right? So we have support here. We have to look left and make sure there is nothing else. Uh-oh, we got resistance sitting up here. Uh-oh, there's your resistance. And I'm just using these to show you, you know, to give you some examples, right? Giving you examples. Um, as a matter of fact, I have to mark both of these. But I'm marking these areas to show you how the market moves, okay? Let's see. Boom, look at that resistance. Got up there, pushed it back down. Look at that. Now, it did hold above this one, so now this one's support. Let's see if we can move. Oh, seller stepped in. Now, do you see how this thing works? Once again, all we, all we are looking at is candles and wicks. That's it. My beginners, there's a reason why I teach this stuff. I am one of the best at this game. <laughs> all right, I love this game and I'm very passionate about it. And I can teach it in a way to make it make sense. Oh, y'all gonna love this. Okay, so look at that. Seller step in like we knew they would. Resistance, resistance. Look at that. Tweezer top, boom, comes right back down to support. Oh my, support, support. Look at that. So now we have two options. It can either buy it back up and try to break these again, or it could take me to my next support. I'd be looking for open here or open here, right? Let's see, okay? Open, holding support. But look, it actually took us up. So literally, that's a day trade, boys and girls. You could have literally, that's not even day trade, I'm sorry. That's like an hour trade. You could have bought here at 415 and took it to 417 in less than two hours. Less than two hours. Now with shares, don't get me wrong, with shares, that's just a $2 move. Most people say, man, I got to put $400 on the line to make $2, Tay. I don't like it. But when you get good enough and after you've paper traded and you come up to, you know, an adult decision to say, hey, I'm ready to start trading options, guess what? A zero day contract, basically what that means is you got one day to expiration. A zero day expiration date and a $2 move would have made you about 30%, maybe even 80%, as high as 80% on that contract. So what that means is if you put $1,000 into, you know, options, you could have made roughly $300 just from this move right here. Just from this move. And could have made as high as $800. So you would have put in a thousand, you could have pulled out 300 to 800 that quick. That's it. And you see how simple that was? We just saw support and resistance. This is no lagging indicator. This is one of those things that I can teach for free and it ain't going nowhere. Why? Because the market moves based on buyers and sellers. All of that other lagging shit, yeah, it lags. It lags and it gets watered down the more people use it. But the one thing that does not get watered down because of the algorithms is price action. Price action. That's it. And price action creates support levels and resistance levels. That is it, boys and girls. That's all. Let's see how this plays out. Can we break? And we are. No, we didn't. Held support. Look at that. Why did it hold as low as here? Well, you got two weeks down here holding support. Oh, baby. Let's continue. Boom. Got above resistance and we out of there. We are out of there. Look at this wick right here. What does that indicate, boys and girls? <laughs> Let's grab a line from down here and I'll show you what it indicates. So if I put a line somewhere in here and then I look left, I almost guarantee you it's a wick back there. Let's see, boys and girls. This is the, the one we're tracking. Let's see what we got. We might have to look far now. We might have to look far. This is part of that patience, the patience game that we have to play 
in the market. You got to look back sometimes. You got to do your due diligence, your research. You have to do this game, right? Because see, people don't know why this thing stopped where it stopped, but I guarantee you it's something back here. Something back here. I'm going to make this yellow so we have a, a distinguished line between these, okay? And we just keep going back. I just, I will wait. I will wait. 419, I'm waiting to see why did this thing, and, and I will keep going. Oh, my God. Look at that. Look at that. Right? It stopped because of this. You have one right here, wick. That's your yellow line. And then there's a wick right here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put another yellow line right there. And what I'm going to do is fast forward back. And look at that. You got resistance sitting up there. That's why it failed. Oh, baby. Are you not understanding the beauty of this thing? This is art. This is art. And all I'm showing you are candlesticks. Support resistance using the wicks, open and closing using the candle. That's it. And once again, I told you, I don't really need much other than that. <laughs> a lot of my, a lot of times my, my charts are pretty empty, right? Let's see if we can get above them. Look, got above them, it gapped up, held support, we off to the races, right? As long as it's staying, as long as it holds, let's say that, doesn't hold, seller stepped in, really heavy. So that means there was some resistance up here somewhere. There was some resistance up here somewhere, okay? Where did it come back down to? Support, look at that. Support right in here. I mean, I can't, I wish I could say, hey man, you know, this is my stuff. I, I can't make this up. This is just what the market does, okay? Algorithms, crypto, and people are like, oh, what are you gonna do when the AI starts taking over with trading? They're gonna follow the same rules that we've been following for the last few decades, pretty much. Few, probably centuries. They're gonna follow the same rules. And it's gonna make trading a little easier for some people who know what they're doing. But guess what? AI algorithms, they all still have to follow certain rules. As long as you know the rules, we're going to be good. These are part of the rules. This is the conversation that's happening. All right. So that being said, let's break down the S&P 500. Let's see what this thing did and where it's going, uh, potentially going. Um, so I'm going to end this replay. All right. We're going to have some fun with this. Okay. Um, me personally, uh, I think I think it was yesterday. I told you all that this was a head and shoulders pattern playing out in the sideways action. And when we broke it, I told you what was going to happen. Well, guess what? We broke it, held it at resistance. Why did it hold it at resistance, boys and girls? What was the lessons we talked about today? Boom. Look at those wicks. Held it right at resistance, and then it fell. Oh, my God. Where did it fall to? I don't know. Let's put a line here, boom. Let's look left. Oh my God, look at that. Support, 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 support. Oh my, you see how this thing works? Ugh. So easy. But you have to know the rules. This is what I do. I teach the rules, baby. Now I got plenty of tips and tricks, you know, how we use the moon to be able to tell what's about to happen with the stock market. We can use the waxing and the waning. I, I have all of these extra things that I can teach. But when it gets down to the basics, I'm still a beast. <laughs> I still like to have fun with this, right? This is something I can still teach pretty much anybody and it help you make money if you really start to understand it on a basic level. This is how it works, right? So as the market was falling, I knew where a potential area was, we could have stopped. Now, it could have been an area right in here that it could have stopped, right? But it didn't. So a price target could have been here. It could have been a good price target. But, you know, some people wait. And a lot of us, we made, a lot of us made a lot of good money in STB, uh, the Discord, um, the paid Discord, because Brian called out puts for the alert. Just by the, first of all, by the way, the reason why there's a paid Discord and the reason why I teach for free and it's two different things, I teach for free because me, Tay, me personally, I'm willing to give my time away because I trade for a living. This is what I do. 
right? And I have other things, real estate, et cetera, right? So it's not me that's giving out alerts in that STB Discord alert group, okay? That's somebody else doing that who might not be as rich as I am. So guess what? I have to pay those people to be there. So the people who are showing up and helping to navigate y'all through this, the paid Discord, they're not going to show up and do that for free now. I'm the one that works for free. They do not. And I'm not, look, I'm rich, but I'm not that damn generous while I'm also going to pay them out of my money <laughs> to show up to give it away for free again. So what I do is I say, look, if y'all pay for it, I'll make sure they get paid and, you know, whatever, and they good. And they, they'll give out alerts because these are my star students. They'll give out the alerts and they'll help and I can create jobs that way. Right. And I told y'all in the group in the, um, the, the free newsletter, the free discord, I told you my goal has always been that whatever I make from my business, that goes back into the business, hiring more people, learning more, um, you know, market research, et cetera, et cetera. Me personally to take care of my housing and red bottoms and cars and all this other stuff. I trade for that stuff. It's always been how I move. And that's what has helped me to be very smart with my money. Okay. So that's kind of how that works. And it's how we continue to do. It. So once again, yes, those calls were made and we made, because I took the play too. We made money on the downside, right? So shout out to Brian, Eon, and all of the other teachers inside of the SP, uh, STB Discord community. Um, y'all are killing it. And I'm very proud of y'all, right? So what can we expect for tomorrow? Well, me personally, I'm going to be expecting a, a baby bounce unless this thing wants to get below this support area and go a little bit lower. Where will we go? Probably here next, right? That's not much of a move. It's like a $2 move. I'm okay with that. But I do think we'll get here and maybe bounce. Where will we bounce to when we do bounce? Probably somewhere in here. So say somewhere in this area, all right? Wick, 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 wick. So we'll probably bounce somewhere to one of these wicks. Maybe even this one, because right? you got two areas, two areas that can, can be bounced to, right? So that's how that works. Uh, be sure to rewatch this as much as possible to help it make it more sense or make more sense out of it. Um, there's many ways I could have broke this thing down but I wanted to use, once again, I want to use what we went over today and show you how you can use that literally by itself to determine where we could be going in the market, right? This has been another STB Market Watch. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please, please, please show me some love. Comment, subscribe, share my shit. I'm going to keep showing up for you, but you got to show me some love. I want big love. I don't even have to be paid, but you got to show me some love, baby. Share it. Like it comment, do all of that. Why am I showing up to do this? For one, it's a blessing to be a blessing and I want to help more people and be a blessing to more people. But number two, the self-serving part of it is it's time for me to put my foot on more people's necks who think they know how to trade, who think they know this thing as much as I do, who have been talking crap. I am going to come out and show how it's really done and show that who I really am, right? So I need y'all to share this. I need you to get it out. So we can see, and we can really show and see who's helping the people, who really knows they shit, who really is doing this, and who's capping, right? So let's get to it. This information works if you work it. Comment, like, subscribe. Once again, do all of that good stuff. Show me some love, baby. Share, share my shit. Show me some love. And I'll see you on the next one. Secure the bag, yeah, that's the brand. And we get to the bag. These